Hi darlings, this is Christina and today we have a special Chanel Jardin Imaginaire collection to go over. So if you're interested, just keep watching and let's get into it. Okay darlings, so Chanel has been dropping things left and right. For those of us who love Chanel and are somewhat collectors of the beauty line, there are normally not this many releases, right? But the nice thing is I had been tipped off a while ago. Angela from French for a Day had stated at the beginning of the year that Chanel was going to be launching many things this year because it's their 100th year celebration in their beauty line so there were going to be a lot more launches this year than ever before and so we have absolutely seen that starting with the chanel Le beige winter collection we thought Le beige summer was going to be the chanel you know launch of the summer but <laughs> surprise uh not the only summer collection um that we got going on so let's just get into it so i picked up quite a few items guys it was such a fun, colorful collection. I couldn't stop myself. And my wonderful essay, well, she's the manager of the Chanel boutique I go to, but she set some things aside for me because she was going on vacation. And I ended up being helped by a wonderful gentleman. I believe his name was Justin. And so I was able to kind of look around. I kind of did a short of this already, so you've seen a little bit of what I picked up. But let me just show you my freebies. She sent me the Chanel number five cute bracelet. Let me show you. I'm going to put it on today. Isn't that cute, guys? Oh. Okay, so there it is. I'm not going to lie. This was a little bit of a booger to put on by myself, but we did do it. And we're going to wear it for the rest of the video. Also got a couple of samples of the Chanel what is this the number five Le Ou. didn't like that one I got a sample of that one the last time but the one I'm pleasantly surprised about is actually Gabrielle Chanel Le Ou. and this was surprising because I don't know if I've told you guys but I have really struggled trying to find a Chanel perfume that I actually like I've tried so many I've tried Paris Paris I thought that line would be very um wonderful but that scent starts to bother me after a while the barisa like those little lines i i tried almost every scent and none of them did it for me until this one i actually sampled it with my husband like i'd like to see what he thinks of them so i you know i spray it and i show him and he liked this one he said it was very light it was very fresh i also sample it at work so my coworkers smell it i'm just giving them a lots of smell and most of them liked it some of them said they couldn't tell i even had anything on if you're the kind of person who wants to leave a trail this is not going to be the perfume for you because i was able to smell it very nicely throughout the day but others were not so just fyi about that okay unless you're leaning in and hugging people and then maybe they'll smell it on you okay but we're going to spritz a little now and let me tell you a little bit about this scent the composition, this scent features four flowers, jasmine, lang lang, orange blossom, and intensely feminine grass tuberose. It's considered to be the most captivating bloom of them all. The grass tuberose has been reworked, resulting in an accord that brings out its green botanical facets. The floral hearts of Gabrielle Chanel Leu is illuminated by sparkling notes with berry accent. For myself, I actually really love citrus smells so a lot of my perfumes of choice have some type of um citrus composed in it that's just my personal own nose i like those type of smells so it makes sense that i would like this one because of that but it smells really nice guys like you know i'm very sensitive to smells and i don't wear many i have a like a very small collection of perfumes that i rotate through and I think I may add this to my collection. I'm going to try it out for a little bit longer, but I may have to put an order for this. And that's so exciting for me. Yes, I like it. Gabrielle Leu. You guys already know I was going to get both the Jardin Imaginaire blushes in peach and gold and light and berry. I do have some comparisons for you. I have a lot of Chanel blushes highlighter duos these are actually some of my favorite things from chanel they're 
there's special editions which is really rough on my pocketbook this year so i've already tried these and i have to tell you i love them both but i will show you samples of them as i'm putting them on myself because they're already ruined pretty much because i did actually um use them like i said i did pick up three of the stylo coutures i got 48 dream leaf uh, i picked up 52 at Ataya, and this one was a surprising one for me this one is the neon dahlia i wasn't initially going to get this one but i saw it in store and i loved it i actually thought i had ordered the brighter coral one but when i looked at her swatches again i was like oh because she sent me swatches prior to me picking them out i realized she didn't even have the coral one as an option so I may pick that one up when they release online because it looks so pretty, but Ataya is very nice. The last thing I purchased was the Chanel Balm Essential and Solar Glow. I actually haven't tried this one yet or the Eye Coutures. I saw both and I'll show you here, both the Solar Glow and I believe it's Moonlit Glow. I can't recall, I'll write down the name at the bottom but i like this one more because it was very unique i felt like the other one was too close to um the mermaid glow me personally i know it's not as glittery but it's still giving me that same vibe i was like yeah no it's too close but this one i don't have anything like it so i chose the solar glow because i do have a bit of a tan i think i want to try solar glow with you guys first it has eight grams of product it is made in italy and has an 18 month shelf life so what I wanted this for is I thought this would be a beautiful bronzy color, which I am not wrong about. I love. So what I'm going to do, I think, is put this on first. Now with the Balm Essentials, they're so versatile. And the nice thing is they don't disrupt the makeup underneath. Sometimes, you know, we just came back from vacation. I wish that I had had something like this too, because this would have been so pretty to put this if you just want a little color, but not too much. So I'll show you this. Very nice. Not a huge amount of pigment. And of course, I'm not really building it up. But how pretty is that? It's got a nice glow. Let's see if I can get a little more pigment for those who are a little deeper in skin tone see if I can build it up a little more you know these aren't meant to really give you a tons of pigment truly you know they are very multifaceted but color payoff they are not really meant to do so I think whatever skin tone you are this is going to be a really nice illuminator for your cheek with just a touch of color so if you see this side versus this side of my face it's very slight not a lot but it does give me a little just a little of color just a touch just a little gloss a little glow very pretty I'm gonna start with the first one now like I said I'm gonna show you swatches on the side okay while I'm doing this so peach and gold of course the packaging it's adorable always has as the actual product will have similar colors on the packaging i've been finding they do that typically with all their special edition it does come with a nice little package a little a nice little cloth which i'm happy to have it does have a 18 month shelf life it is also made in italy and you actually get 6.5 grams of product like i stated ruined okay it <laughs> I'm gonna put it on the side here, um, what this looks like. But you know, I love this, right? Like I love the special designs. And if I just show you, do you see my picture back there, which you guys see a lot of in my bedroom? This actually has the dandelions. So I was like, wait, why is Chanel like reading my mind and loving all the things I love? Mermaids, dandelions. <laughs> this is my year with Chanel, right? Now I will tell you, when I was swatching these initially, it took quite a bit to like get the color payoff off. And, but now that I've like broken it in, it seems to be okay. This formula, I didn't think was similar to anything they've released thus far, 
but it actually is kind of similar to the win the healthy winter glow it's a baked formula but it's very creamy and i will show you comparisons momentarily once you break that seal it is extremely pigmented it's a beautiful color like I said, I will give you swatches and comparisons to many other blushes that I have. I'm going to use my Sonia G Cheek Pro Blush brush, and I'm gonna swirl it in. And I'm gonna take, put it over the, the glow. Do you see how much pigment? that is over top right off the bat look at all that pigment and the formula is matte but it's really creamy this may be like my favorite of the formulas because it's not shimmery it's not shiny but it's I don't know if I want to say it's blurring to the skin but it definitely has a smoothing property to this particular formula see how it's just giving me just the nicest color payoff and remember I have that moonlit glow underneath so that's why it is taking a little bit longer to pack it on because it's really t holding on to that emolliency but very pretty guys look at this what a pretty 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 peach color very nice now I'm going to take my Wayne Goss brush and P.S. I think he has new brushes out. I'm not a huge brush connoisseur, but there are some brushes that I really like. So this is a beautiful gold color. Like a, it's, I would say it's a true like light gold color. It's very smooth, very creamy, very true to Chanel highlighters. Ooh, that's a lot right there. Now that's my own fault because I did put that Balm Essential on. So it's really holding on to all the emollients in my cheek and I put a lot of that Balm Essential on. Now you could either put it all over your cheek Right, or you can just highlight certain areas like this. And the nice thing is no matter how much you put on, it doesn't increase your texture. It looks really nice. Okay guys, now I'm gonna show you this side of my cheek without that Balm Essential, so you can kind of get a, a good idea of how this applies if you just have the blush. And I feel like playing with these it is better to apply these with a denser brush I did initially start using my refer brush to put these on and the color payoff wasn't as great to me I just felt like it was taking a lot of effort to get that color payoff whereas a denser brush like either this brush and then I'm going to use the Chanel cheek brush for the berry the berry color it just applied better so and then I'm gonna take that gold color so that's probably not gonna make a huge difference but I did want you to see how much easier like it didn't hold on to that color, that highlighter, as much as it did on this side because it didn't have the moonlit glow attached. So pretty. It just looks so good. I, I don't want to say this is my favorite blush formula from the, this year. Like I said, it's very close to the Healthy Winter Beige, Lay Beige collection, although I haven't pulled those out recently. But so pretty. So pretty, guys. And this is the peach and gold. I'm going to remove just this one side so I can compare the, the two for you and then we'll do the light and berry. BRB. Light and berry and I have quite a few comparisons for this one too surprisingly because I do really enjoy these purpley fuchsia tones but look at this color. Now 
you would think this is going to be deeply pigmented, not so flattering on light and light skin as much as medium to dark skin, but I think just applying a little because they don't pack a punch right away. You really have to build it up. Many people are going to be able to use this. So I'm going to put this here, that same pretty creamy formula. And like I said, I'll show you on the side, such a pretty, pretty color. It's different than the one that came out, the medium rose gold from the Le Beige. This is definitely more, it's a deeper berry, cranberry pink, maybe not so red, more on the purple end, but definitely different. So I'm gonna use my Chanel brush, like I stated. So do you see, right away, packing a light punch, but look how pretty that is. You know what's funny? I wasn't sure if this was supposed to be part of the winter collection initially, the fall collection, sorry. I thought this may be a fall collection because the colors, even though they could be for summer, they could also be very fall-like. And right away, guys, this one, as you can see, very pigmented, doesn't take much to build up. I'm gonna build a little bit more so people who have darker skin than I can see that you can really get a nice pigment. It would almost give like a burnt skin look in the summertime, see? You don't have to build it up this strong, but you could build it up this strong. I'm gonna bring that intensity down a little. This is just a clean brush. I'm just taking away some of that intensity because I want to do the rest of the video and not with a burnt cheek look. And I did clean off my Wayne Gloss brush. I really like this for the highlighter. So any type of brush like this will do. And this highlighter is freaking gorgeous. You would think it's too light, but it actually isn't too bad. And especially over top of the blush, really nice. It reminds me of the Le Blanc Pearl, the little color. But I wore this to work one day and I, it was giving. It was giving very, <laughs> shall I say, gosh, I feel so young saying this, but Sabrina Carpenter-ish. So you know, little pop star Sabrina Carpenter with the pretty pink cheeks that are very exaggerated which I'm a fan of. I love a exaggerated pink cheek. And on myself, I was like, oh my gosh, I feel so young because it's reminded me of that particular pop star cheeks, but in a very sophisticated, elegant way. Women of all ages wear Chanel beauty, but you know, it is catered to women who are more mature in skin and cannot have too much going on to emphasize texture and all those things. So you can see this is it built up. Even though I brought that down, um, you can still see how much pigmentation. But like I said, you don't have to build it up that strongly. Okay, so now that we have got the cheeks out of the way and the Balm Essential, let's play with the Stilo Ombre et Couture. Now, I am a fan of these. I do already own a few, so I, they ought to say I do like them. I hear that these can be used in so many ways. Yep, eyeshadow liner coal, and I've never used it that way, but we're gonna do that today. I brought you guys in a little closer so you can see this on the eyes. I'm gonna use a Taya, which is a really pretty, almost like burnt orange terracotta color. It's very pretty. Let's just put this, let's make this an eye shadow. I have no idea what I'm going for with this look, guys. You're kind of just coming along the ride with me. I'm kind of yellowing it, guys, right now, so... It's pretty, though. It's like a metallic color. So you can see the color. Let's put on the other eye. So obviously with, I don't know, this purple a fuchsia color, not as complimentary, but with the peach gold color, very nice. But that's nice. Like if you had a quick, you know, 
we needed a quick look. I'm just gonna go a little, cause I typically use these on the bottom of the lid usually, or inner corner. Rarely do I use these as eyeshadows, so I wanna see what it looks like under my lid. That's pretty, yeah. Okay, I could not say no to this chartreuse orange color. Oh my gosh, I don't have anything like this. So I, I had to add it, I just did. I have like a couple of outfits I think I could really rock this with. Since these are very like graphic liners, we're gonna do like a crazy graphic look guys, okay? So like I said, we're kind of playing. I have no idea what I'm doing with this right now. So I put Ataya here, oh I'm sorry. This is Dream Leaf. I don't know if I love it there like that. Let's see if I use it as a liner like that. I don't know. The bottom is really not giving. So, and I put it over here, but it barely shows up. Maybe that's a good thing all over the lid like a green would that look nice i don't know i don't know what to do with this color right now i'm not sure i feel about it but i definitely don't like it underneath so i'm going to remove that okay so i couldn't quite get rid of that color as best as i wanted to i'm going to put a tie back under here and see if i can bring some harmony back to my face not loving I did not like that green underneath my eye. I don't know what it was doing, but it wasn't doing me any favors. Then we have Neon Dahlia. I'm not always sure about purple colors, but this one was so pretty, almost like a periwinkle. And this as well as the Neon, the Dream Leaf, sorry, Dream Leaf and Neon Dahlia do have noticeable sparkle. Ataya does not, just so I can let you know that. Let's see, let's see how this looks. Typically purples are okay on me, depending on the tone. Oh, I like this one a lot better. And guys, I did swatch some of the shades, the pink shades, and I will link it, I'll put it here. The pink one, just to me, I felt like I've seen it like a million times. I have a lot of colors going on. In a real scenario, you would not actually use all these colors together, right? It would be like a, like a one option color, like you're just playing with one color, not three at the same time. So I'm probably not doing it justice doing it like this, but since they're like fun colors, I felt like why not do this, right? So this has Dream Leaf, Ataya, and Neon and um, Neon Dahlia. And this one I just have the Ataya and the Neon Dahlia as like a liner. And I think in real life, if I were to use this one, it would be with a very plain eye very plain like basically just bronzer and this liner and it would be so pretty i'm gonna redo this these colors i want to do them justice just with a little bronzer on the outer corner with the liner i'm not going to necessarily do this on, on camera with you but i'll show you what it looks like if you were just to do it on a normal basis this is how i would do them okay okay darling so this is how i would do it truly so i just put a little of my hermes atlas bronzer uh, in the crease and underneath my bottom lid and then i put on neon dahlia and dream leaf so i want to show you this before i put mascara on because once i put that on it's going to obviously make everything better um but i want to show you that first so i'm gonna let's do this because i only showed you solar glow underneath let me show it you on top. So typically how I use my Bomb Essential 
you can use it straight from the stick, but sometimes I like to put it on the back of my hand if you don't want to get too much and just put it over top here. Um, because it is brown, I don't know if it's going to translate as well with the pinky side, but this is what we're here for, trying things out. So it did tone down this color. So I would put the highlighter over top again. I mean, I would over solar glow. And that's also going to make it adhere a little better. Like I said, it doesn't have so much pigmentation that you can't, you know, wear it on any, over any color and it doesn't disrupt the makeup, but it's pretty. Okay, darlings. So now that I finished that, I'm going to put my mascara on and come and show you different comparisons for both the, for both the peach and gold and the light and berry. Okay. BRB. Darling, so I finished my mascara and I wasn't sure what kind of lipstick I wanted to wear, but I did, I combined the Sephora Rose Wine 03 Rose Wine Cream Lip and the Chanel 928 Sweet Treat, which was all the rage last year when Sophia Richie got married. So it's a really nice plain color. I knew I wanted to give myself a little bit more color to my lips, but not too much since we have the fuchsia and the coral, but I thought this would pair okay. Well, let's first compare the peach because there's been so many peach colors. So I'm going to do it on my left hand. Let's start with the newest collection. Okay, so this is from Jardin Imaginaire. It's a really pretty orangey coral color. It's very nice. Let's compare this to the Le Beige collection that just came out. This is in medium coral. And like I said, different kind of feeling. It's definitely not as creamy, a little drier of a formula. Go back and swatch again. Second swatch. So you see it took me two swatches to kind of get this pigmentation, but you can see this one actually is a little deeper in tone. This one is a little lighter. It also is a little more translucent, definitely more pigmentation. It's very pretty and creamier. And it definitely gives a lot more bang for your buck. So Jardin Imaginaire and Le Beige Medium Coral. Also going to compare one of my favorite um, Coralish blushes. This is the 797 Bet et Corel from the last fall collection. I'm going to put this under here that way so you'll know if you have any of these colors if anything is similar you know so not similar at all it's a very powdery formula very light in color very light indeed this was my second swatch and i'm trying to make sure you guys can see it but jardin imaginaire medium coral and bet at corral okay so now let's look at all my berry toned blushes so we're going to start with the chanel berry and light light and berry okay i'm wiping my hand my finger in between that's just one swipe look how pretty that is true like fuchsia color in my opinion no you're wondering what about rose gold okay i gotta be delicate guys you already know i this one has had a few accidents so this is in medium rose gold now this one i will tell you does have some sheen to it so you remember when i said it was more like a strawberry pink color that's why to me it just that color and it's so beautiful I can't oh you could probably use these together and make the prettiest color which I'm gonna have to do at some point you know I like to mix my colors so there's that very pretty I love this blush and then we have I'm gonna give you from Le Beige 
winter collection. This is Mauve Glossier, another beautiful formula. Very similar to this one because it's very creamy. Pretty little snowflake. You can see how little I have worn it. But the thing that happened was when they released this, it was in January. So I was feeling like all my fall things, it's still winter technically, but we were moving into different seasons. So I didn't get a chance to use this as much as I wanted to. But you see with one swatch how creamy that is. So yeah, very similar in the formula. However, different in tone. So this one looks more like a berry brown color versus the pink fuchsia. We have Rose Caucage, which doesn't swatch well, guys. So I will do my darndest to show you this as best I can, but this is a very light formula. So see, barely shows up. So I already know it's not gonna be the same. Even the coral color doesn't show up as much. It's a drier formula, but very blurring, and it looks beautiful on the cheeks if you're someone who doesn't want a lot of shimmer. Then we're gonna talk about Howl's Labs. This is no longer available, but this, is, but this was the lavender blonde color. So, purple-esque, so no, not similar. I wasn't sure and I thought, let me try it, but it is very different. It's, it's definitely more of a violet, um, lavender color true lavender okay darlings so those are all the things i selected those are my final thoughts what do you guys think do you like the light and berry or gold and peach i love them and they're both so unique to my collection i don't have anything quite like these colors yes i have similar colors but nothing exactly the same so i feel good about purchasing both do you the normal consumer who doesn't have a makeup channel and doesn't review makeup for a living need all of the releases only if you're like a collector like i think if i didn't have a youtube channel i would probably still purchase the chanel special edition products i definitely wouldn't order every all the things i have now i have a lot of products but I love their limited edition cheek products. That's sad because it's not the normal collection that I gravitate to. There are definitely some hits in their normal collection, but I gravitate toward the special editions. And all the ones that I've had thus far this year, I have loved. So no exception here. Comet Collective have really given us quite a bit in this first half of the year and I've just been loving it. So I have no idea what's in store for us for fall and holiday. There are a few sneak peeks about fall coming out now, trinkling, but I am just so excited, especially for holiday. I really love Chanel Holiday. I wouldn't say it's my favorite collection of the year. They're all favorites in some way, shape or form, but I just love the whole vibe of Christmas and then all that they entail. So I'm very curious about what's gonna happen this holiday collection. The Stilo Ombre et Couture pencils, very nice. Um, I think Dream Leaf is something I have to work on because I barely can see it. I definitely like the purple, which is the Dahlia, Neon Dahlia and Ataya, my favorites. If Green Leaf or Dream Leaf was darker in tone, just a little deeper in pigmentation, I think it would fare better on my skin and many other skin tones. I don't really care for this one. I'm gonna figure out how to work it, guys, but I haven't figured it out yet. And yeah, it's just not my favorite. I love the Solar Glow that I picked up. I don't have anything like this from my Balm Essentials collection, and I do love my Balm Essentials, guys. I use them a lot. I just really love them. I love the versatility. I love so much about them, and so I'm glad that I do have something a little different to my collection. Overall, darlings, I love the collection. Tell me what you think. Are you guys interested in picking me up? I'm gonna try to get this to you guys midweek. We're gonna see, because I felt like I was working on that, um, violet fr video for like all week long and that was like too much so i'm going to try to get this condensed and get this to you by midweek that is my goal release date um i don't know i'm hearing 
later July, early August, who knows, you know, it releases in different places in different times. And that gets frustrating for many. I'm in the US personally. So they're in the boutiques. I know that my girl actually said that they were supposed to come out. There was a delay and we weren't expecting them until later July, but ended up coming up sooner. So if you're interested, let me know. I can give you the information to the boutique that I actually go. I will DM you that separately. Ask me on my Instagram. I don't go on Instagram to really debut products much anymore, but it is a good communication tool with me because I will answer absolutely your questions. Well, anyways, darlings, I hope you enjoy this review. Let me know what you think. I hope you have a great day, a wonderful week, and I will catch you in the next one.